Hi Peter. Hi, it's nice a real, real pleasure to meet you finally in Melbourne. Thank you. So today we have seen a man telling us his story of chronic low back pain during more than 35 years. Yeah. What could you tell us about the cause of chronic back pain? Yeah. So um, it's really common. So chronic back pain is really common in our community. Up to 30% of people have pain that stops them, them from doing stuff they love engaging in activity, work, social activities, movements, um, and it's one of the biggest causes. It is the biggest cause of disability. So we know it's a really big problem. Um, there are a lot of things that are uh, misunderstood about pain when it becomes disabling and persistent. And uh, one of the most common ones is that there's a common belief that pain in the back is a measure of how much the back is damaged or how much wear and tear is in your spine. And, and that's just not true. So we know now from a number of studies that um, scans like MRI scans um, show changes in almost everybody. Yeah. And particularly as we get older. And when we look at people with pain and without pain, it's not a really good measure of their pain experience. Yeah. And we look at how severe the changes are on the scan and it's not related well to how much pain they feel and how disabled they are. So what we know about um, back pain is that if you become fearful of your pain, if you start protecting your body and you stop using it and you start avoiding the stuff that you love, that can become disabling. And pain itself is scary. So particularly if, if you lose confidence in your ability to do things that you enjoy, that becomes scary and that can create worry and that can affect your mood and all of those things in themselves can turn up the volume switch on your nervous system. And it becomes a, a vicious circle. Exactly. So you would say that avoidance might be the biggest trap. It's a massive for, trap. Yeah. So we would say there are a couple of, well, a number of traps. The first is the belief or the mindset that yeah. pain means I'm damaged. And of course, if you are damaged, you don't want to move that part of your body. But what we know about the human spine is that it gets its health from movement. So moving your spine makes it healthy. Loading, exactly, loading the spine makes it stronger. And often what people do in pain, they stop moving, they guard it. It's a bit like clenching your fist on a sore wrist. It doesn't help. And then they stop doing the very thing that can help them, which is to move it and load it. And and that's a natural consequence of the messages that are common in that community. That pain means you're damaged, that you need to sit up tall, work your core, avoid bending, that then leave people trapped in this cycle of being disabled. So when we start avoiding the stuff that we love and we start protecting our bodies and, and lose confidence in engaging with those things and moving the body, it sets the system up for pain. Um, and part of that, are what we call, um, you know, central drivers of pain, where when you're tired and run down and you're stressed and you're fearful, the, the, the nervous system's sensitivity, the volume switch turns up on the system. Yeah, so they burn it on the context. Exactly, yeah. And so that has huge implications for how we manage people with pain. And the first one is just understanding, you know, making sure that you see someone who, um, can, can honestly um, educate you that you don't have anything serious going on with your pain, like a cancer or a fracture or infection or, or you know, an, an inflammatory disorder. Uh, and once that's ruled out, um, you know, engaging with movement is safe if you have a, a degenerate disc or facet joint arthrosis or disc bulges. And we know that the majority of the population have these things yeah. and can safely engage with movement and bending and activity. And it's building that confidence back to get back to living, which seems to be so important for people with pain. Yeah. What, what would you say to people that have uh, back pain, like intense with flare ups, yeah. and have they, they know that in the exercise they will have back pain and they will, they will have flare ups? So, uh, what would you say to those people to give them yeah. confidence? Yeah, so I think working with someone who can coach you through that's important. Yeah. So we know that techniques such as <clears throat> keeping calm when you're in pain. Yeah. So breathing techniques, relaxation techniques. So often what happens when you're in pain, we go into panic mode. We tense up, we yeah. stop breathing, we start hyperventilating. And that's the fight flight response. But you can't run. You can't fight There's your internal self. Exactly. So you're just stuck in fright. 
So calming that response down by just relaxing the body, going to a safe place, slowly breathing into your belly, just letting the tension drop, um, gently starting to get movement. All of those things can really help just to calm the system down. But then looking at your whole life and going, how are you managing the stress? Are you getting enough sleep? You know, are, are you engaging in regular physical activity? Um, are you protecting your body? Are you avoiding stuff? Uh, and addressing those things, and have you got a mindset that builds confidence back in your body? Addressing those things can have a really powerful effect of getting people back to living in your life. Yeah, so there is hope for everyone. Absolutely, there's hope. And look, that's not to say that the journey is not easy. It, it, it is an, it, it's, a, it's a difficult journey. It's a marathon. It is. And, and I think the other thing we have to understand is that um, it, pain is part of life. You know, I would feel pain in my body all the time, but when pain becomes distressing and it stops us from doing the stuff we love, it really has a major emotional impact on us. And for some people, that's a really hard journey, and sometimes that's influenced by a lot of hardship in someone's life that can just leave them vulnerable to pain. That's not vulnerable to damage. It's just vulnerable to the nervous system being more sensitized than someone else. And that journey will be tougher for those people. Yeah, it's all dependent on the context exactly. and how we respond to pain and not really the pain itself. Exactly, yeah. And so, you know, our job is to try and help people in that journey. It's, it's, a, it's not an easy journey. It's so much really, really tough. And it's yeah. a long journey and others it's an easier journey. But it's a journey to be worth taking. It is, yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.